Get your on that closure. That's a 10 freeway heading east and westbound. I'm making everybody get off the freeway, even though it looks perfectly fine. It's not on top that's the problem. It's what happened here underneath. Somebody started a fire here last weekend. You've seen it on the news. Apparently they were storing junk underneath the freeway. Junk! <laughs> What's the deal with that? We'll get to that in a minute. It burned so hot, engineers are concerned that it roasted about a hundred vertical bridge columns underneath and they don't want anybody driving on it until they know those columns are safe. So let's talk about the three questions on your mind. One, how soon are they going to get the freeway back open? Two, who's going to pay to fix it? And three, why is California letting people store flammable junk underneath the freeway? This video won't have quite the polish you're used to because I'm trying to turn it around in like 24 hours because there's a big story related to roads right in my own backyard and I want to bring you here while it's still hot. The, the story, not the, <laughs> not the fire. Traveling through a downtown on a skyway feels just as satisfying as riding in a monorail that you get to control until they have problems. You have a dense downtown grid and a lot of small streets and when you put the freeway through, rather than close many of those streets off, you just build a giant bridge, take the freeway up in the air on hundreds of columns and fly over the top of the city. You see these kinds of skyways all over the country. Even smaller places like Wichita, Kansas, or another one I've seen here in Medford, Oregon, downtown Las Vegas. And you probably remember this one in Atlanta, Georgia, where the Department of Transportation stored polyethylene tubing underneath the freeway viaduct, which ended up being a mistake. And what happened in Atlanta is sort of what happened here in Los Angeles. If you think about a skyway though, it doesn't just cross the city streets, it also crosses the blocks in between. That's land the state owns, and to make a little money, the state leases that property out. So you have bus yards that are underneath the freeway. It's like the Los Angeles Unified School District, who use this different part of the I-10 Skyway as a school bus garage. Sometimes they lease it out to private tenants, industrial uses, like in this case, a storage yard. The client here was storing pallets and cars, and apparently somebody got in the yard and uh, started a fire. It all burned so hot that it roasted about well, only 100 of the vertical columns. <laughs> 10 of them are in real trouble. A disaster like this couldn't happen in a worse place because if you go just a mile east of here, there are two freeways, the 10 freeway and the 60 freeway, but they merge together and all the traffic comes through here with no reasonable alternate route. There's the 101 freeway up north, but it cuts diagonally up to the San Fernando Valley. Thankfully, post-pandemic, a lot of people can now work from home. They can take new light rail lines and commuter rail lines that the city didn't have in the last disaster with the I-10 Skyway 30 years ago. And we'll talk about that in a minute. So enough backstory, let's get to the questions you wanna know. Well, people living here in Los Angeles got some very good news Tuesday morning. Engineers have been taking a look at it, and they've worried that the horizontal part, the box girder structure that cars drive on, that that was bad, and that would mean having to take down the entire section of Skyway here. But engineers are now not concerned about that. They're focused more on the vertical columns holding the structure up. If you see these bridges in California where it's smooth concrete on the bottom and you don't see those I-beam girders, well, that's because this is called a box girder design. It's all one structure. It's actually hollow on the inside. It's like a concrete tube, and there's pieces of rebar steel in there that reinforce that concrete. And when they work together, it can be very strong. Let's go back in time and talk about when a bridge like this, a box girder bridge, is first under construction. Well, this is mostly concrete, Concrete's all drippy when you pour it. It's not gonna hold itself up in the air while it casts in place and dries and cures, right? So the state builds something called a false work. It looks kind of janky. You can see from these uh, photos of an upcoming video about a freeway flyover under construction near where I live. False work is a way of shoring up the bridge, holding the bridge so the bridge doesn't have to hold itself. And then once the bridge cures and can hold its own weight, they take all the false work down and open it to traffic. Well, they're kind of doing that here. They're bringing in some false work, shoring up the bridge to take the stress off of all of these columns. So one, they'll know that the freeway is safe for people to drive on because all that false work, all that shoring up, well, it'll take the load. And then that gives them time to go one by one to each column, try to fix it, get it permanently back in service. And then they can take their time with it and make sure they do it right. Okay, so let's talk about money. Who's going to pay to fix this? Is the city stuck with the bill or the state? 
What's well, sounding like the Federal Highway Administration may pick up 100% of it if it meets a few conditions. This is called an Emergency Relief Program, ER. And if you look at FHWA's documents here, they have a list of what some of those qualifications are. So let's see if it meets it. Number one, it has to be a disaster. It can't just be, oh, the bridge is getting old. It's, an, it's a disaster. So yeah, that should qualify. Number two, it has to be on a federal aid road. So if a big mudslide or landslide comes and wipes out your neighborhood street, the feds aren't going to pay for that. That's not interstate commerce, you know, business between states that the federal government would be interested in funding. But a roadway that literally wears the badge interstate highway, well, yeah, that's going to qualify for federal aid. And finally, qualification number three, there has to be at least $5,000 worth of damage. I think we're going to be all right on that one. All of this seems to qualify. So it's a good chance the federal government will pick up 100% if they get all the work done in 180 very short days. Otherwise, the federal government only pays for part of the repair. And that's the key. And that's why this is going to happen very quickly. Now, California has a reputation nationally of being slow, but actually the state has a lot of practice dealing with stuff like this. This is a special edition of NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw. Freeway system that serves as many as 13 million people. After the 1994 Northridge earthquake, another section of the I-10 Skyway, about eight miles to the west here, well, a bunch of the concrete fell off the columns and then there was nothing holding the rebar in, so it just kind of started drooping down and the whole bridge deck fell many, many feet. I don't know exactly how much. What the state of California did is they worked with the contractor to saying, look, we got to get it done in under 180 days. You quote us a date less than that. And for every day faster than that, we'll give you $200,000 a day if you get it done early. But if you're late, we'll charge you $200,000 a day. The contractor came back, said we could have the freeway done by June. People were driving on it by April. Leasing vacant land underneath California's freeways is a business practice that goes back to the 1980s and really it was a brainchild of the 1970s. That's when a casino outside of Reno, Nevada started renting the space under I-80 for a bakery and storage facility. The collaboration of a private property owner, Nevada DOT and Federal Highway called an airspace lease. California went wild with these during the 80s, leasing space under a freeway interchange for an entire shopping center, which honestly is good use of limited space, right? And it could be big money for the state. After California canceled the two freeway through Hollywood, this land in the middle of the 101 freeway had no purpose. So the state leased the airspace to the storage unit company for $14,000 a month. Not something the state takes lightly. This airspace contract was for 55 years. But Caltrans had dreamed of it being the other way around. High-rise building developers would lease space over a depressed section of freeway and build a skyscraper on top of it. But that never seemed to pan out. And I can't help but think if this is a moment where at least city council members are asking the state to reconsider, or at minimum, reconsider what kind of tenants they lease the space out to and how frequently they inspect the property to make sure people aren't storing flammable pallets and cars underneath a road that has half a million people go over it a day. Well, with all those people, federal deadlines for the money on the line, and California having practice dealing with this kind of a disaster, I'm willing to bet you'll see traffic on this freeway probably faster than three weeks from now. And as for it being completely finished, if I were a betting man, I'd say February 1st, but uh, I guess we'll have to wait and see. If you'd like me to follow up on this project in the weeks ahead, make a comment below and let me know what you'd like me to try to find out. And thanks for indulging me and coming out for a road media circus because I can't help myself. Thanks for watching. I tried walking up that parking structure to give you a better view, but the security guard stopped me right away. <laughs> oh well, I tried.